Hey, Solis. Asian Solo, Matt Rice here. Uh, back with another roundup of the, the crowdfunding type games. Um, over the last week, this is the February 28th, uh, 2024 edition. And plenty of games, especially on Kickstarter, plenty have come out um, over this last week. So, And this is just focusing again on the solo um, or soloable type games. Um, so the first one I've got here is uh, Board Quest, Towers of Lyria. Uh, so it's been up for a little while now, 14 days to go. Um, this one, I think, just came up after I finished my last game. Um, and this one does have a soul mode. It's one to four players. It's by um, Remy's Wear. Their first created. And it's doing okay. Um, funded. Going a little bit above. Um, and this one has more of a fantasy theme. We've got that explore. Um, most of it's a bit more sort of 1v1. Um, I think when I looked it up, it doesn't really say it specifically here. This is the, kind of the downside of this campaign. It doesn't mention too much about the solo mode at all. Um, so two, two players, co-op, story player mode. You know the forces of Lyra against the demon invasion of five to ten hours solo campaign. So I think it's only against just one of the of the factions. So you're probably not going to get the full amount of this game from things. I'll, and the other thing is they don't ship to everywhere. So... Um, I've asked about that one because I was curious about this game. I've so far pledged, but I think I'll back out of this one. I'm not sure. Um, but there's a few different levels. There's even like a Steam top game they're coming out with, which I think is also sold player for those that are digital. Um, but otherwise, get some miniatures and get the standing game for 65 euro. Um, I missed the early bird, and there's 85 deluxe. Um, you can bundle both together. So that's Board Quest, Tales of Lyria. Um, looks interesting. So I'll give it a shot. Uh, next one is Flow. Uh, just recently came out just a couple of days, within the last couple of days. Um, doing very well. It's already almost three times funded, um, supposedly, if you want to take these funding goals for truth. Um, 2000 backers doing really well here by Pika Games. First created, so they've done really well. First created to get that high. Um, and this one here, it's a bit, bit hard for me to tell what solo really is. It says one to four. I'm not sure if you're playing against like the game itself how it really works. Um, there is plenty of videos here, a few um, reviews, different pledge levels, different amount of content you can get. Um, Rado's had a look at this one as well. Um, and yeah, Thomas Colbert, I've got to give him a bit of a shout out. I'm, I'm a fan of his on Ball Game Revolution through Facebook. So give him a look too. He loves solo games as well as more play games. Um, so Adventure Strategy Game is what I get here. Um, I like how it talks about how it unlocks the mechanics as the game goes on. Um, so similar to like for those that have played um, Jaws of the Lion from Gloomhaven. I like how a game can do that, like step you through how the game plays. So it's a bit easier to get into the game rulebook wise. Um, looks nice and friendly, like family friendly type game. Little minis, discover new regions, have an encounter. So it sounds interesting. Um, I'll have to look at the playthrough myself here. I'm not sure how solo goes compared to, say, multiplayer. It doesn't really mention that. Um, plenty of playthrough videos, though, for those that want to check it out. Yeah, they might move on. So that's Flow. A lot's come up is Ascending Empires. So this game here, if I get rid of this, I'm not sure what's going on with the top banner there. Um, so funded as of now. So 16 days to go, it's funded. Um, one to four plays. It's more of like a 4X type game, this one. So expand, explore, exterminate. I've missed one. Expand? No. <laughs> I missed one there somewhere. But... Um, it looks interesting, more of a sci-fi version of the um, 4X type game. Talks about the components first. Um, there is a solo mode. I'm not sure how it differs too much. Again, another one doesn't go into too much detail. Um, I swear it mentions it here somewhere. I think it was in the components before, like the solo components that you get. If I go back up the top. Here, solo components. You get target planet cards. So I assume you can play against like an AI that you put the card over and it will go to that zone. Seen games similar to that do that style with a 4X type game. Um, but yeah, that's another one to check out. Um, pledge levels. Looks like there's just one pledge level, which is $110 to, to get the game itself. Okay, next one on Kickstarter Ostia, Pirates Expansion and Reprint. Now, this one is actually two to four, but there is a solo mode or it's a stretch goal somewhere. If I scroll down to it, um, bit of a review by Alex there. Um, I haven't played the original game at all, I think because it's not soluble, the original game. Uh, again, resources, take away ships, move around, perform an action. 
Okay, then draw an event as you go across. Okay, interesting. Um, pirate ships, and I guess so it's maybe more competitive, but I imagine there might be an IOI version. But it doesn't go into any details about the solar. If I have to scroll way down, take a look at opponents, stretch goals. Solomon, oh, Solomon just got unlocked. Through. So I imagine there might be an update soon that will talk about how that works um, and what what you might need to buy for it. Maybe there's something extra that's going to come with that. Okay, that's uh, Ostia. Next, we've got Cascadia as a roll and write version, flipping roll and write version. Um, it's doing really well, like well funded. Um, massive campaign, 38 days to go. It's really long. I'm not sure why it's so long. Uh, but they're by Flatout Games. They've done a few games around that they're, as I said up here, they've done Burn and Calico. They're very popular puzzle type games. Um, and people tend to love them. I've actually played Cascadia myself, the solo game, um, solo able game. But yeah, it looks like it's more of like a, a right, yeah, right game, roll your dice, collect your resources type game. Um, but looks interesting. Um, pray for a cheaper product. Um, the, the, theme, the same sort of theme as Cascadia, of course. It's in that universe, I guess. Um, it looks like you mark off your resources, try and complete your tasks. And I think with this one, this for solo mode, this scenarios. Uh, if I go down somewhere, not there. Why well, get both? Why not both? Um, yeah, twenty unique solo scenarios, twelve for each version. Name more in each box I can play by combining both versions. Okay, so we get both, you get twenty scenarios. So yeah, pretty handy. Roll dice, collect your wildlife. Play the habitat card, mark off your environment sheet to get the points, I guess. Yeah, so I'm interested in how the scenario goes. I'll, I'll keep it a watch on that one. That's probably a possibility for me. Dying Light, um, from the obviously from the video game, doing really well. All these video game games that come to board games tend to do very well. Done by Glass Cannon, who I believe did uh, Frostpunk. Um, quite a, a big puzzly game for those that love their deep, in-depth puzzles. Um, yeah, and they're coming out with this one. Put out our offer if you're in, in, in with a chance. Get some more stuff. Looks like, yeah, I had a look at this. Looks like it's more um, component wise, a bit more like 3D based, a bit more well, one deluxe component wise with that. Um, which for me personally, I, I don't necessarily need that, but for some people that might be really cool. Um, I think it's a bit more like dice placement type game. Um, they're one to four players. I'm not sure. I know Mark Dainty does in Rolling Solo. Yeah, they're, they're both like solo type guys. So it must play pretty well there. I imagine you might have to control a few characters. I'm not sure if it's true solo or not. Um, but yeah, it's solo out of the box. Anyway, that's doing really well. Um, pledge levels there. I don't think it's super expensive for the type of game it looks like. 60 euro. And deluxe pledge, 110 euro. I won't be surprised if there's more um, expansions out here. But um, yeah, hoping it's easy to get into. I know with the, the Frostpunk wasn't quite for me. It was a bit too in-depth to get in. The rule book was really heavy. Hopefully this one's a bit lighter. Uh, next one I've got up here is more of a uh, print and play type game. Shot and spin, just a small cheap game. Um, created by, was it Dade or Dade? He's got six created. Um, I've seen one of one others of theirs. I think that's up for sale on this as well. It's, it's kind of like a just a, a draw type game. Um, so you either distance and you draw across. It's that kind of game that, you know, Play with a pencil, things like that. Um, kind of cool. Pretty cheap if you just want a quick print and play game. Um, but that's available. Six hole tournament. Yeah. Next one. So this one here, um, TCG style, but except it's always in one box. You don't have to keep buying things. Imagine they might come up with more if it's successful. Um, three times funded at the moment. So I guess it's going okay. Um, promises to be only a bit twenty minute game. Be pretty cool, and there is an expansion that lets you play solo with this. Otherwise, it's a dueling top game. Um, I'm not sure how much of the components are taken out because of that when they do that kind of thing where it's here's this extra box, and it kind of reminds me of um, uh, if I can remember the name of it, that game that I've got too that also came out with the solo mode Ashes. So, Ash looks a bit like that. Ashes when they've got like a boss that kind of gets like a cold boss. Um, Plenty of cards, plenty of good artwork on it. Um, I'm not sure if there's much else to talk about with that one. The, the, so you have to get the expansion for the solo mode. The problem with the solo mode is um, the expansion that you get, it's one to six. So you get a lot more components that you probably won't use, like the six player boards. You don't need all of those. So to me, that is a bit of a worry that you're paying for more things that you don't need. 
Uh, but otherwise, looks interesting. We'll check it out. Next one that's come up, not just recently, if I go back to the top, is the Living Maze. Um, so it's just come up on Kickstarter for the last day or so. But it's well short of its funding goal at the moment. Uh, first created by Crow Brain Games. The so Living Maze. And this is a full solo game. It's just a solo game. Um, the number of adventures you have is represented by 10-sided dice. Okay, so how to play week one. It has like a bit of a, it's probably a bit text heavy for me, but it's got some pictures here. Right, so you build up a dungeon book and build up a dungeon front. You move around, have encounters, I guess. Roll dice, I assume. I assume. There is a playthrough here, which I recommend checking out. I, I haven't yet. Um, just first time I come across this as I'm doing this video. You can play on Tabletop Simulator. That's always handy. Took about eight bosses. Talked a little bit about understanding it. Ten types of monsters. The artifacts you can get, traps you can come across, other cards. Week one. So does that mean as it gets it gets stronger as you get stronger? I assume that's what that means. The tries a lot but with you. Um, yeah, looks interesting. Um, price on this one. Uh, what have we got here? Twenty dollars for the regular. Thirty five dollars for the early bird special. The deluxe. Otherwise, it's forty five bucks for the deluxe. Um, okay. Interesting. So that is living maze. The next one I've got. Um, again, it's right at the top, is Expedition. Yeah, so apparently this is a previous game that's getting redone with an extra solo mode added on top. Um, I've never heard of Expedition before, so it must be a bit older than... I've been back in the board games for about the last 10 years or so, so it must be a bit older than that, or maybe I missed it. Um, it's just overfunded, which is good news for them. Uh, Maple Games, they've got five created if you want to check them out. Um, so Ultimate Edition, new solo, solo mode and co-op mode with this. Uh, it looks kind of interesting. Go on an expedition, you get these little ship meeples. Um, I'm not sure if it tells how much how to play, really. Solo cult, maybe we go. The two scoreboards, movement rebels. So maybe the, the version of Solo is a little bit different. The terror expansion that comes with it as well, which I think is pliable for multiplayer too. Choose your action and prestige, be adaptive. There's a rule book there, there's a couple of playthroughs. Check that one out. Uh, so fifty dollars, two dollars for the HMS pledge, group pledge, things like that. Okay, interesting. Next one, Transcendent Crusade. Um, I think it's been up for a couple of days. This one, a few days. It's um, not quite going too well, um, but it is solvable. Uh, and one to three players, like a roguelite board game. It's promising. Uh, the price on this one, sixty dollars for early bird. Uh, Otherwise, seventy dollars. Limited edition, eighty dollars, etc. Ultra limited edition, two hundred dollars. Really want that. Um, so it looks like yeah, it's like that roguelike thing. You choose three different pathways, work your way up. I believe if you get defeated, you just go back to the bottom again. Keep trying. Um, hence the rogue version. If you play the obviously the video games with it, um, kind of reminds me of um, Ruins Deathbinder a little bit. The looks of it, but um. Doesn't it's probably a bit text for the campaign page. It's probably a little bit text heavy. You probably need to show off like a playthrough of it, uh, or at least a sample round or something. Some stretch goals. Yeah. Interesting. <laughs> but you know, good luck to them. Hopefully they get some more backers coming up. Hopefully they get some more more details about the game. Uh next one I've got still on Kickstarter, by the way. <laughs> on Kickstarter this week. Um, I've never really heard of these games, Compass Games. I've, I've, been, I've gone through, I think I've heard of one of them before. It's it's funded well. It had a pretty low goal, but it's funded. Um, Storm of Steel, it's like a war-type game. Solo only, so it's Solitaire game, which is very useful for us solo players. There's no dramas with missing components and things like that. $79. Um, what you get, I had a look at this before, what you get, $79 sounds a bit steep for me, um, but that's not my call, maybe, you know. Maybe there's more to the components that I know about. Um, select campaign, formation, aircraft, and crew. So you set up like your own crew. A bit, a bit of, maybe a bit of pen and paper in this, but looks like this. It seems that way. Out of log sheets here. How to play. Yeah, interesting. Um, so for those that like their kind of war games, I guess, like playing games, is, is it available add on, get Bismarck. Um, I have heard of this one, this anime action art, Dan. So. So they've created those. Well, you, can, you were able to get that during this campaign too to save on shipping, I guess. 
That's all there is to that campaign. So the campaign's a bit small. Wouldn't mind some more detail on that. Uh, next one, this, this is a small game, the upgrades and market expansion. Some expansion coming up, it's still underfunded. Um, done by G. Wesley Cohn, for created. Seems like, and this is like a little pocket game. Looks like this. Um, it promises like a yeah, five to 10 minute filler game with a solo variant. Um, yeah, I'm not sure if it talks too much about the solo. It just says a unique solo that expands your player agency. About solid multiplayer rules. Solomon. Hasn't really there. Enjoy going alone with a single market deck. Yeah, and they've got, oh, cool. And they've got a play. That's excellent. I'd love to see that when, when there's like a, especially when it's a game when there's a multiplayer top game and there's a solo version of it. I'd love to see in a separate playthrough or a separate overview of how it works. Fantastic. I'm glad that they've done that. Good job. Uh, price of this one was $5 for print and play, $15 for the expansion. New to the game, twenty eight dollars to get both. Want to in if you want, yeah, if you want to play three to four players, so you've got to get another version, I guess, forty two dollars. Okay, all right, getting closer to the last uh, Kickstarter game that's coming out, and it's been out for a while. This one I just missed last week as well. Uh, Street Masters. Um, I actually have this game uh, from the original um, campaign by Blacklist Games. Um, I won't go into too much detail with the story, I don't think. Um, just let's just put it this way, there's been some troubles with delivering the second campaign. Um, some people missing stretch goals, and there was even an Indiegogo campaign where there's some dramas, and then Blacklist Games have had major dramas if you had other games of theirs. Um, you know, I'm still waiting on Contra, for example, as a pre-order, uh, which who knows where that is these days. Um, Steamforge has picked this up, and um, they're going to give this a go. They said they've even going to deliver some of the old um, Indiegogo campaign backer stuff as well. So that's good of them. So they're trying to revive this game essentially. Um, they've even like relabeled what it looks like. It has that Streets of Rage Sega look to it now. Uh, and it pretty much plays like that. I've got this game and um, I don't think I've done a playthrough on my channel, but um, it's quite fun. A lot of different different deck modules, different maps you can use and um, different characters you can choose. So it's like a deck. It's like a deck and dice game. So your deck of cards, you play the cards, do a certain actions, and you roll that certain amount of dice that the action tells you can do. And it might give you a separate action. You can, might, might be able to move and then roll some dice. So you might be able to do something else and roll a couple of dice and a certain amount of successes does something. Um, enemies keep coming out and there's a boss eventually that you have to get to and kill um, in most scenarios. I think there's other scenarios where you've got defuse bombs and things like that. Um, put it this way, there's plenty of content here um, and there's plenty of um, playthroughs out there. Once I've called shops, definitely done one. Um, this comes. This campaign comes with an extra part four, I think. I'm not sure if part three's come out before. I don't know. It might have. Um, kind of dear because there's a lot of gear in it. And to be honest, I've got the first game with two of its expansions, which was Legends of Oni um, and Twin Tigers. And maybe it's all looped into the same box now. And I have not played it through at all. It's plenty enough as it is. Just as a word of advice for those that maybe like me don't get things to the table as often. Um, but yeah, fun game. Lots of different combinations you can do. Um, you can play it true solo. But I recommend playing it with at least two characters. Um, some of the characters can play true solo well, some not as good. But plenty in here, plenty to, to look at here. It's doing really well. Um, well, over, well over fun. So that's good news for it. I guess people are still um, giving faith in Steamforge games to revive this. Um, so if you've got everything, you can just get this version for 39 pounds. But I imagine there'll be a lot of different um, no, maybe not as much as I thought. Yeah, so the biggest one is 285 pounds, which is whew, massive in my terms. Um, Alrighty, and then off to the Game Found games. The only new one I could find in the last week with the loads for me is Candy Hunters. Um, this is a one to four player and, um, created by, I've forgotten Game from where they say who creates it. <laughs> right here. It's Smart Flamingo. Um, I'm not sure what they've created otherwise, but a bit more info on them. Uh, they've made Eater and West Story. I don't know those games, to be honest. Um, but they've made a couple of games. And um, it's a tactical abstract strategy game. So I wonder how Solo works in this one. So if I scroll, scroll and scroll down. Much of a mention of Solo, maybe down the side here we have Solo mode. Twenty puzzles of increasing difficulty. Take a solo card and try to collect given number of points and set number of turns. Cool. So it's like a separate solo mode. 
You also earn points in the same turns. You get points as usual by filling one of the given pattern cards and scoring candy. candy. Okay, so there's something there for solo people. Um, this one, is it just one? Yeah, it's just one award, so 35 euro on that one. So, yeah, check that one out. Hey, Solace. All righty, and now I'm going to look at some updates. Um, so things that might be upcoming that I've just taken notice of, those that stick around this long in the video and just once I have a chat about little updates I've seen, things that are coming in the near future. Um, Awaken Realms just had their last, um, like I guess you call it, live uh, streaming um, updates on their new upcoming games. Uh, I haven't watched it all yet. Uh, be good to watch. Um, there's a few, they've come out with a few games. We've got Lands of Evershade, Grim Coven, Fjord uh Awakened Realms, Vault, which I think is accessories and stuff, and Castles of Burgundy um, again. <laughs> um, and they're coming out with a tabletop RPG, uh, for Tainted Grail. And looking through these, there's two of them that look to be soluble coming up in the future. Lands of Evershade, uh, it's meant to be one to five. That merges Waking Realm storytelling and quality with a dice based RPG system and fast combat, supposedly. So instead of card based, it's going to be dice based. Um, so one of the common ideas are going to be the old ring of board games. Um, so it comes to two hours new board game co op solo adventure experience for wonderful players. The person that um, wrote the story for Tanner Grail and LSS Vanguard. So I have both of those games, both I have yet to really crunch into yet. Um, Tanner Grail, I've got my short for shame. You know, I says Vanguard, I've only just done the tu tutorial. Uh, I only just came, I only just got it recently with the second wave. Um, adventure gameplay with many adventure creation systems, respecting players' choice and the very character creation, up to what equipment you would decide to carry. So it's trying to get a board game of an RPG, which sounds good to me. Just depend for me, I think it depends on the theme and how much, how how heavy it is, how well driven it is. Um, again, they, they like to show off their niches, Waken Realms. Um, Looks interesting here. And all of the artwork that was do here. So scheduled for Q4 2024. So there's not much to give away as of yet. Uh, but that's upcoming. And there's also Grim Coven. Discover a new miniature boss battle for one to four players. It's in Dark Victoria Universe where only the hunt matters. Uh, so tactical gameplay. Um, so again, that's soluble. I promise it's up to two hours. I don't mind the Victorian theme. It reminds me of like Curse City, um, the, the Warhammer Quest Curse City. Um, the look, man, I wish that game would get more attention more <laughs> from from Warhammer. Um, yeah, crazy boss fights apparently. Um, crazy looking miniatures that are probably heap expensive. But I noticed that Wake and Worms and Game Finals, it's I think it's the same company combined. They might get it out cheaper. Um, the people out there, so yeah, that's what they got for that one. So just just teasers. Essentially, and the last thing I want to talk about um, that I've come across is so Kinfire Council. More of a debate. So Kinfire Council, it's a two to six player game, um, but they're going to come out with some more stuff for Kinfire Chronicles and Kinfire Delve if you sign up now for a dollar. Now, this has come up with there's some other people that have been talking about this recently on on um, on my Facebook groups uh, about what is this? Is this a pre order to pre order? crowdfund to crowdfund sort of thing and you know what do you loot like if you put a dollar in now what, what are you not seeing compared to someone else are you getting something slightly extra is it like an exclusive it's interesting it's probably gauging their interest coming into a campaign I imagine a bit earlier who's actually really keen for it I don't know it's only a dollar that's what they're probably hoping you know it's only a dollar but you know what do you you get an idea what the game is with that like for me for example I would like some of the expansion Type stuff. I imagine they're just little expansions, but expansion type stuff for um, Kinfire Chronicles. But I might not be interested in Kinfire Council because it's two to six play. So where does it stop? Do I then pledge this and then I have to pledge the base game of that even though I don't want it? Yeah, I'll put debate. Happy for people to put in the comments down below and talk about that one as well. Um, people to talk about their Awakened Realms next excitement. Say in the comments. And of course, any games that I might have missed, um, let me know. I'll add it for the next next video next week but that's it guys thank you so much for sticking around please like and subscribe um i'll keep doing this series for a little while see how the interest is how to gauge it and uh um, i hope i get some new games coming in soon too i think i'm in a bit of a, a bit of a slump of the what 
<laughs> Excuse me. What games are coming in? Um, so awaiting a few games actually to be coming in soon. Anyway, Solus, crush your game first. Play Solus.